let's go ahead and get started, guys. Um, for those of you guys that are watching the recording, I apologize that today's webinar is so late that most of you guys are probably watching the recording right now. Um, I just didn't, didn't get to bed until about five in the morning last night. I just was on my computer and you know, one, 1 a.m. turns into 2 a.m., 2 a.m. turns into 4 a.m. and next minute I know it's 5 a.m. and I'm just barely going to sleep. And my body is pretty much at the point where I'm used to getting a, a good eight hours of sleep. You know, just just to kind of digress a little bit from the main point of Forex and just talk about sleep for a second, you know, like I'll take like two minutes and just talk about this is uh, there's someone I've actually been listening to uh, a really good podcast. I recommend all you guys to look up if you have if you have an iPhone, if you look on like the podcast app, I think you can also listen to it on YouTube, but I don't think they have both parts of it. It's about a two hour long podcast. And if you just search, uh, so the, the name of the podcast is called London Real. That's the person that does or the, the, the show. And then the person that was on the podcast, his name is Jason Silva. So if you just look up uh, London Real Jason Silva and the name of that podcast is called, I believe, Transform Your Consciousness. And it's really good. Um, uh Jason Silva is what you might call like a, a social engineer or like a brain engineer. He's really, really good with, you know, talking about the, the things that a lot of people in society and a lot of like humans, like we forget like our energy and our vibrations and how important it is to, you know, protect ourselves and our mindset. And one big thing he talks about, which I didn't, I didn't recently put on a lot of importance until I heard his podcast was getting a full eight hours of sleep. You know, one thing that he talks about, and I think I've mentioned with you guys recent, recently over the past couple of weeks, as I've learned more about it, is uh, what's called flow state, is getting your body into this state of just where it's like this creativity. And I mean, you really have to like look up what flow state is, but it's just like this like point when, and everybody's pretty much experienced flow state at some point in their life. It's when they're doing something and they're like doing something at their best and they aren't really like realizing exactly what they're doing. And a lot of times it comes um, like that stimulation to get into flow state or that flow state happens when, you know, you're doing like some sort of physical activity, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical activity. It's just like a very common, common factor for people that are in flow state is, uh, is being in that in, in the zone pretty much if you will and so to be able to get in the zone for your body to be able to produce all the chemicals and um, you know that chemical reaction inside of your body where you can actually get to that flow state and have this thought process of creativity and thoughts flowing and you being at your peak potential you really need like a full eight hours of sleep for your body to rest so um, recently I've been trying to get in that, into that schedule. Um, no, normally I, I don't try to go to bed around five in the morning, but, um, uh, you know, any, I try to go to bed around uh, 10 PM, 11 PM, and then wake up at like six or seven in the morning. So that way I'm able to get that full eight hours in that way. I'm able to try to induce my body as much as possible to get into that flow state, you know? So I urge all of you guys um, to look up, especially if you're watching the recording, I see uh, Jacob, you're mentioning Jason Silva. That's awesome. You know about him, but just, just look it up, um, on like your podcast app. If you, I, I think if you're on Android or a Google phone or whatever, I'm sure you have like some sort of like podcast app, just search London real Jason Silva. And the name of that podcast is called transform your consciousness. And I think maybe for some of you guys that haven't really like touched on that subject before, you know, we all know it's there. We all know our consciousness is there. We all know that being real and being like in our thoughts and is, is a very real thing. And just a lot of people are just out of tune with that. So it's, it's important that, you know, we, we, we try to get back to that state as po as much as possible. Uh, Jacob says, Adam Conover just did an episode on sleep. He said, younger people need eight hours and older folks only need six hours. That's, that's good to, that's good to know. I wonder where, I wonder where Adam says that, like where he, um, diverges between younger people and older folks. I'm sure he's probably talking when he says older, maybe like once you get into like your forties or something and maybe like 39 and, and before that is younger, maybe, maybe he's talking about even sooner, but I'll definitely look into Adam Conover is another good person as well. I just am a big fan of, of, uh, 
the way Jason Silva talks. He's very like poetic and talks like in like a very like writer format. You can follow Jason Silva on Instagram too. He posts some really good stuff on there. Like really some things that, that'll just blow your mind. So sorry to spend like five minutes plugging in Jason Silva, but um, highly recommend that if you guys are trying to get in that mindset. And, and, and the only reason I bring this up guys is because all of that being conscious and being in a good mindset and in having the strong mindset and being able to get into this flow state, it all relates to trading, right? Because for you to be able to trade professionally on a level and manage a lot of money and to be able to get that level of consistency in that robot like um, the risk management and risk to reward and being able to remove your emotions from, you know, maybe wanting to risk a lot on a trade and wanting to over leverage and wanting to flip accounts and do this and that as if you can, it's like a domino effect. If you take care of your body, if you take care of your temple, everything else falls into place. Okay. So, you know, that, that goes back to not just your mindset. It goes back to like eating right, doing, having healthy habits, you know, working out, doing this and that, and just taking care of your body because your body is a temple. Your body is the most important thing that you have. You know, we're here for a finite time, finite limited amount of time on, on this planet. So you should be taking as much care as you can to your body and your brain will thank you and your brain will help you in all other aspects of your life. So yeah, just a little bit of plug on mindset real quick before we jump into things. But um, let's go ahead and just kind of look at the economic calendar um, while we jump into everything, guys. I just want to kind of talk about a couple of the key things that are going on this week. So we talked about it yesterday on the weekly outlook that there is just a ton going on. Okay. Our most notable, like there's red folders all throughout the week. There's three interest rate decisions this week. And there's a bunch of GDP and a bunch of CPI coming out. Um, and then other stuff too. Like, I mean, there's some retail sales coming out, some press conferences. I mean, there's tons of stuff, but I'm just pointing out the big things. And most notably, what we would call a key risk event. I mean, there's a lot of key risk events, plural, uh, for this week. But the biggest key risk event by far is going to be the federal funds rate from the Federal Reserve all right. Um, now for me, this falls on Thursday morning. For most of you guys, this is going to fall on Wednesday afternoon if you're in the Western part of the world. Um, but that's, and that's why it's good that you have your economic calendar set to the right time. You can see where I am right now. It's actually 2.15 in the afternoon. Um, so anyways, with this federal funds rate, we are expecting a hike, okay? There shouldn't be a surprise of them not raising interest rates, okay? So at this point, there's only two things that can happen, okay? There's a 100% chance that they are not decreasing interest rates, okay? So we know that every time an interest rate comes out, there's either three things that are gonna happen. They're gonna decrease interest rates, which is called a rate cut. They're gonna keep interest rates the same, or they're gonna raise interest rates, what we call a rate hike, all right? now there's pretty much a 100% chance that they are raising interest rates. Okay. It's already on the table. They've already talked about it. Um, it would be a big surprise out of left field if they kept interest rates the same. Okay. There's no way in hell, no way at all that they're decreasing interest rates. Only option is that they keep them the same or they raise interest rates. And it is way more than a 50% chance right now that they raise interest rates. It's only a very, very small chance that they keep, that they surprise everybody and keep interest rates the same. Okay. So that being said, expect a lot of volatility on the dollar. We may actually finally get the dollar to find some direction. Okay. So this is the daily chart on the dollar index. This is what measures the strength of the dollar. And pretty much since the beginning of November, we've just seen the dollar index be in this major consolidation phase. You know, it's slowly, if we, if we take the lows of November down here, and then we look at like the highs, we have made a series of higher lows, right? This is a low, this is a higher low than the previous low, and this is another higher low, okay? Now, but for us to continue to be in an uptrend, we don't just need higher lows, we need a combination of higher lows and higher highs, okay? So we actually have, you know, this high that is higher than this high. So we were making some series of higher highs and then we made this higher high. But then 
we started to just kind of top a little bit, right? And this is kind of where we've been at, is we have not broken and created higher highs. And so that what, what's, that's what creates, uh, you know, from a technical standpoint, that's what we call consolidation, when price isn't making higher highs or um, lower highs. And it's just staying in like a block, uh, it's staying in a range of price and not moving a whole lot. And that's what we're looking at right now. And there, you know, there, I'm not a big fan of range trading in a big zone of consolidation, right? That's why we haven't touched Euro USD much. That's why we haven't touched, uh, you know, with the exception of the previous USD Swiss franc trade that we closed at break even um, after holding for like two weeks, we haven't touched really m a lot of, of, of pairs recently. Um, you know, we caught a little bit of, of money on, or ca ca uh, caught a little bit of profit on, AUD USD, and that was mostly due to the um, oversold indicators, our price action technical indicators, and just the overall price action and trend and momentum of that specific pair. Not a ton of relationship to the US dollar, but still had some influence to that US dollar strength that I was looking for. And I mentioned this yesterday, right? And this is why it's important that you guys stay updated with my bias and, and you don't just watch just one webinar and assume that that's, and I say, okay, well, this is my long-term bias. Well, my, it's, it's very possible that my long-term bias can change before we get to that long-term point. And that's because of just the way the markets, markets react. And so you guys know for a while, I've been expecting some sells on the dollar index, right? I've been looking and wanting as much as I've been wanting to get it, right? I've been wanting to see some long-term downside, right? It originally started back here, right? You guys remember, for those of you guys that don't remember this, I mean, I'm just going to very quickly just recap it. We bought this dollar strength and we bought this dollar strength in the form of selling Euro USD, right? If you guys remember back when this week started, because this was a new weekly candle, we actually sold the daily candle that did the opposite of this on Euro USD. We made about a hundred pips on this trade. We closed it at the top of the dollar strength, which was the bottom of Euro USD. And I said, most likely this is looking like a fake out and sure or a fake breakout. And sure enough, it was a fake breakout. We saw a bearish engulfing candle that following day. It was nice that we got out of the trade and locked in some profits and we saw some downside. However, on that downside, if we look at the dollar index, we failed to make a low, a lower low. Okay. If price had come down here and let's say found a bottom down here, then that would have been a new valid lower low. And that would have induced a stronger trend or a stronger uh, presence of sellers in the market. But we did not see that happen. We, we continued to see the sellers or the buyers have control by just actually making a higher low. And then once again, over the, up the next couple of days, we saw price come back up to the highs and we looked for, I don't even know if we looked for sells at this point. I'm pretty sure we were just on the sidelines with Euro USD, just kind of looking to get some direction. And that's where we've been for the past couple of weeks, right? We've just been looking for some direction on the dollar index and we haven't gotten that. And I think the markets are really just kind of like, I um, mean, I've said this before, guys, imagine like a spring, right? Imagine like, uh, have you ever gotten a pencil before? Like a mechanical pencil or a, I guess a pen actually, not, not, a, not a pencil, a pen. And you know, you take the pen apart and inside of the pen, there's a spring, right? And everybody always takes out that spring and plays around with it and whatnot. And you know that if you take that spring between your two fingers and you push your fingers together, right? You push your fingers together and you try to compress that spring as much as possible. You know, sometimes you might be able to compress it all the way, but most of the time it gets harder and harder and harder to compress. And then eventually when you get to the very, very end, when you think it's going to get compressed all the way, that um, momentum or that compression gets released and the spring goes flying, right? I'm sure you guys all have had this exact same thing happen in your life, right? Maybe not the older generation as much, but for us younger generation, or I mean, everybody's been in school before. So I guess that's not even right to say. You guys all know exactly what I'm talking about. So, and that's kind of what we see in the markets, guys. That's what tends to happen when price consolidates. When price consolidates, there's like this spring and price gets tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter together. 
until there's really no it, it can't really get much tighter and there's only one option that the, that compression has to go in either the upside or the downside and right now i just have to be honest and i can't get too married to that sell bias that i that i've been wanting to see since the beginning of november and we've capitalized like i said a couple times on a few pairs with that mild short term usd weakness that we've seen but overall the dollar index is still largely bullish right and, and this is the weekly chart right the weekly chart is still quite bullish on the dollar index so you know the big thing now that i'm looking at is going back to that original scenario which we've pointed out a couple times we weren't really too sure if the, that scenario was going to hold but we were looking at an inverted head and shoulders right we were looking at an inverted head and shoulders now originally our thoughts were well this this is an inverted head and shoulders but it doesn't really look too much like this inverted head and shoulders was going to play out right and that originally came with where my cursor is at this weekly candle right when we rejected off of this neckline we had that strong bearish engulfing candle not even engulfing necessarily but it is actually a little bit engulfing just by a couple of pips it's engulfing but uh, more so we're looking at the wick to the upside in the lack of a wick to the downside and just how bearish that that specific weekly candle is and that's what originally created uh the start of some short-term selling bias on or not even short term but looking to see short term which would elongate into some long term a long term bias of selling the dollar index and because we have just not seen pretty much since, since that week we've actually just trended slightly higher and just continued to stay in this consolidation that leads me to believe that this dollar index that this uptrend that we've been in since late april early may is still largely intact is that this uptrend is still largely intact okay um uh, guys, also, by the way, if you're just hopping on right now, please watch like the first 10 minutes of the replay. I went over some very valuable information. Um, so with the dollar index, I think that we're looking for this resistance to break and we're going to look for price to go back up. Now, if we zoom out now, you guys know, I would highly recommend all of you guys have these levels. These two levels on your chart is the 93.2 level. Okay and the 100.50 level on the dollar index and you can have both of these levels extending back to early 2015. so these are multi-year zones of kind of like supply and demand that we have on the charts okay and we've taught for those of you guys that have been in the group for a couple of years now um, not even a couple of years if you've been in here actually yeah it would it would be a couple of years because we've been talking about this zone since like late 2016 early 2000 I mean all throughout 2017 we talked about this zone in middle of 2017 when price got to this zone we talked back about this level in early May of this year when price got back above the 93.2 level so um, there's definitely been many times and for some of you veterans in the group you guys already know that this has been these levels have been talked about many 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 times in the group and that may be where we're looking for price to move towards next okay so that's what I'm looking at on the dollar index and what's really gonna give us that clear confirmation I believe is with whatever happens on Wednesday or Thursday uh, wherever you are with the interest rate decision from the Fed okay that is going to create the sentiment in the markets for institutions and commercial traders the people that have billions of dollars of leverage in the market to move the market in that direction okay because remember remember don't forget the cycle the psychology of the market at the end of the day the only reason the candlesticks go up is because people are buying whatever you're looking at okay the reason the candlesticks go down is because the majority or the people that control the markets are selling whatever a uh, commodity or currency you're looking at on that chart and in this case we're looking at the dollar index so that that buying pressure that backing if you will that institutional backing or that institutional support 
behind this movement to the upside would most likely come in the form of the Fed raising interest rates because that just incre- that that makes that just creates a stronger dollar, right? We've already talked about that yesterday on the webinar, how at interest rates going up generally creates deflation for a currency, which, which deflation creates appreciation of that currency. Okay, so it's important that you guys understand that, okay? For those of you guys that are, that are hopping on right now, um, make sure you watch the beginning of this webinar. I'm going very, I mean, you'll see if you stay in here for the rest of the webinar, you'll see that I'm going into things very detailed and very meticulously today. In the first 10 to 15 minutes, there's some very valuable information. So make sure you watch the replay as soon as it's done here. I'll have it literally uploaded within 15, 20 minutes of us finishing the session so you can watch it right away, okay? Um, but that's what I'm looking at for the dollar index is a potential scenario for a breakout to the upside in this to continue trending higher as we've seen this year, okay? Basically changing our bias because we have not seen the downside that we've wanted over the past couple of weeks. So we need to learn to not get married to that bias of wanting to sell the dollar index and we need to recognize actual price action and what is actually happening on the charts. And we need to be able to react to that, okay? Not have this bias that we're married to and think just because we're so married to the bias that, that it has to happen on the charts, okay? Now, take that with a grain of salt though. If we do see a buy the rumor, sell the news type of situation where in reaction to the dollar, uh, the Fed raising interest rates, we actually see weakness on the dollar, then we, we could see price pull back down to the 93.2 level. So very important and very key to see how the markets react on Wednesday and Thursday. And it's not important to catch that move on Wednesday and Thursday, guys. I don't want you to think that, and the reason why I'm saying Wednesday and Thursday, again, is because of the time zone, depending on where you are. We're just talking about the Federal, Federal Reserve raising interest rates, okay? Now, you do not need to catch that move, okay? Yes, it, it will probably be a big move, right? We might see some pairs move 100 or a couple hundred pips. That's very possible. But I don't want you to have that mentality, that left out mentality where you feel like you need to catch that move. Because at the end of the day, in my opinion, I think a, a large portion of taking a trade right before an interest rate decision is that gambling mentality. You don't need, you can make tons of money after the initial move, guys. You know, that 100 or 50 pips or however much a, a pair moves with that direct relationship to the interest rate change, that isn't going to have, you know, that has really no bearing on a long-term move where we catch, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred, a thousand pips on a trade uh, because of the initial catalyst of this move. Okay. So just something to keep in mind, but moving on to gold. Well, um, gold, I'm actually really not interested in trading right now. Um, it would make sense that if we do see the dollar to be, to continue its uptrend and continue to appreciate that we'll see uh, some sort of dip on gold that we'll see this this correction that we've been in since uh, the middle of August where we actually made a low of this year at about 1160 and this is price per ounce of gold okay so 1160 and that's US dollars right because it's XAU which is gold versus the US USD so that's $1,160 per ounce of gold, and now it's risen. So gold has appreciated. Gold has risen in value to $1,246 per ounce, and we may see the price of gold decrease on the dollar strengthening, right? Because investors will take their money out of gold, which is considered a safe haven, and they'll put it into the dollar. They you know, the, the whole thing with, with investors and big money and commercial traders is they're trying to put their money in whatever they can get the best in, you know, in, in terms of risk to reward the best returns on. And if, if that's perceived that those returns are going to be easier, easily found in buying the dollar over buying gold, then they're going to sell gold and they're going to, they're going to sell their positions on gold and they're going to ch- move those positions into buying the dollar index. Okay. And that's why we see the dollar index and gold or just the dollar, the U S dollar in general in gold tend to have a negative correlation, right? When the dollar is down, we usually see gold going up. And when we see the dollar go up, we usually see gold go down and that's just generally how it is. Okay. 
Now, take that with a grain of salt too, because if you also look at this recently, like let's just take the past couple of weeks of data, we've seen gold, you know, gold dipped originally to 1200, bounced off of 1200, and now it's back up at 1250. Well, it's been in a little bit of an uptrend, while the dollar index hasn't been in much of an uptrend, but it's still trending sideways and it hasn't trended down as much. So take that correlation that I just said with like a grain of salt. We're talking like long term with that type of correlation, okay? Um, inversely, with Euro USD, you know, I just spent about 10 minutes just really breaking down the dollar index and my thoughts on the dollar index. So what you should do is take what I just applied to the dollar index and apply the exact inverse or opposite to Euro USD, right? So if I just said that, um, you know, we were looking, we've been looking for sells on the dollar index, then you guys should know that we've been looking for buys on Euro USD, which is true. We've been looking for buys on Euro USD. But again, we go back to the original point and the, the, you know, the thesis of that entire uh, bias, which is because we aren't getting married to our bias and because we're seeing the dollar index to continue to consolidate at those highs, like we're seeing the Euro USD right now continue to consolidate at these lows, there's a very good chance that we could see this trend that we've been in since mid April, which was an uptrend for the dollar index, which is a downtrend for Euro USD to continue and move lower. And inversely to the dollar index, having an inverted head and shoulders, there is a proper upright or just normal head and shoulders on Euro USD. Okay, so we, we could see this neckline on Euro USD break and price move lower. And wherever the dollar index goes up, whenever the dollar index hits 100.50, that's where Euro USD is most likely going to see some support at, if that makes sense. Okay, because pretty much the dollar index controls Euro USD's movement. Okay, it's not, it's not the other way around. It's not Euro USD controls the dollar index. The dollar index is, is much more heavily weighted than Euro USD. So we see what we were, what you actually see happen is Euro USD reacting to what the dollar is doing, not the dollar index reacting to what Euro USD is doing. And that's why I put so much emphasis on these webinars on the dollar index because it controls not just Euro USD, but a lot of the rest of the market. Okay. Um, so USD Swiss franc, um, I'm not super interested in trading. I can actually change a couple of these things on USD Swiss franc. I'm going to remove this. I'm also going to just remove this for now. And I just want to look at raw, raw price action. USD Swiss franc just has not given us a lot of movement. Um, you guys know that we, we held a position for like two weeks, right? We originally took a sell back here on like November 20, 21st or 22nd. And we were expecting downside. We had our targets actually all the way down here at this, at the, where we would find a higher low being made in the support of this trend line. And we had our stop loss just above the highs, right? Because we didn't get stopped out. We almost got stopped out by a couple pips. And then on this drop right here, we ended up closing our position, right? And I, I said, because of discretionary trading and the amount of consolidation we had seen before, I believe that we would continue to see this consolidation. And that's actually exactly what's happened. We've just continued to see USD Swiss franc. This is the daily chart, by the way. Just stay in this major, major consolidation area and it hasn't broken out. So um, again, it goes back to similar to the Euro USD and the dollar index with price just being stuck in this consolidative range and just waiting for some sort of catalyst, which again, I believe is gonna come in the form of uh, the interest rate decisions changing this week. And uh, that should push these pairs in either direction, okay? Um, pound, I'm not interested in trading pound dollar right now. I am looking though, and I do recognize the selling pressure, right? I know that there's a lot of negative sentiment and I know that Great Britain and the Eurozone and just a lot of things that are going around with the ECB and Great Britain are not good, right? And that's creating negative sentiment on pairs like the Euro and pairs like the pound. And that's another reason why I'm not gonna like backtrack too much and uh, digress by getting back into EuroUSD, but that's another reason and I've talked about this in the past about 
why I think Euro USD could also continue to fail is because of the Eurozone failing, not necessarily just the dollar strength. So Euro USD next year, guys, we might see Euro USD weaken a lot and go back to, you know, around parity, the 1.0 prices, which would be about 300 pips lower, right? If we go 300 pips lower, that's going to get us to about 110. And if we get lower than that, you know, that that's getting pretty close to parity. Okay. And that's, you know, we don't, we don't see that too often with this pair. So I think that that's something that we could see that's on the table, but uh, pound dollar looks like it could continue to see some weakness as well. I would be bearish on pound dollar. Um, again, not just because of dollar strength based on the interest rates uh, being uh, hiked in the US, but also a lot of it having to do with weakness of the pound and, you know, a lot of Brexit hoopla, you know, going back and forth with Brexit and it turning out that, okay, this deal might necessarily not be so good for, for, for the pound. And, you know, there's also been uh, there was the resignation of, uh, I, I, I'm forgetting exactly the person who it was, but someone very close, it wasn't the prime minister, but someone very close to the prime minister of Great Britain um, that that deals with a lot of like the financial aspects of Great Britain. He resigned because he wasn't a fan. He doesn't believe in the resolution that Great Britain is going for. So there's a lot of just negative PR, if you will. Um, it's not even PR. It's not even like public relations. It's more just negative connotations with the pound right now. So I, I really wouldn't be looking at anything other than selling the pound. Okay. Um, and this goes for pound yen as well. Um, so for pound yen, we've been looking for some sells on pound yen, right? I think, you know, I, I'm trying to remember, we actually took a sell on pound yen. Let me, let me just very quickly look through really quickly because I'm pretty sure we took a sell on pound yen at some point. Yeah, we did. 143.20. Let's see what happened with pound yen. 1% replay is up, set stop loss, at break even. Closed GDP, that, well, that worked out. 170 pips gained on GBP. Oh, okay, yeah, and that was December 11th. Okay, so yeah, we, we made, oh, that, that's right. So 143.20. So we sold, we've been looking for some sells on pound yen. We sold a 143.20 on the 10th. So December, let's see, December, let's go back a little bit. Okay, okay, so it's actually been a little bit. One. Let's go back to December 10th. Okay, that's where it is. Yes, 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 yes. I, rem I remember it clearly now. Okay, so you guys know, so let's, let's start off very quickly with the monthly on pound yen. You guys know that we originally, when this month closed, I said, all right, we're pretty bearish on pound yen. Over the past couple months, we kind of finished off that correction back in February of this year that we were in from uh, late 2016 to early 2018. So over a year of correction on pound yen after a major downtrend. And we would probably expect something similar to this, which is like, guys, that's 6,000 pips, 6,000 pips. That's a lot of money to be made, right? If you could just like, imagine just catching one pair, imagine just taking just, just this trade. You know, maybe this, hopefully this puts things into perspective for you guys about quality over quantity. This one trade can make you double or triple what you want to make an entire year on one pair, on one setup. That's why I focus so much on quality over quantity and looking at the big picture. Is if, because if we can catch these big moves, and we have, we've caught a couple multiple hundred pit moves this, this year, okay? We've got a couple 200, 300 pit moves this year. Okay. Now this upcoming year in 2019, my goal is just to start catching these really big moves and to get a little bit more conservative or a little bit more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A little bit more, um, adapted to taking trades based on these higher timeframes and being okay with holding them for multiple months. Okay. And, and being able to like literally catch thousands of pips off of these pairs, not hundreds of pips. And I do love pound yen. I love pound yen. I love a lot of the yen pairs because they, you know, they sometimes they'll go through a long time periods of consolidation, you know, six to 12 months or longer of just moving sideways and not doing a lot. 
But once they pick up that trend, whether it's a downtrend or an uptrend, there's a lot of opportunity for money to be made on these trends. Okay. So with pound yen, I am looking for some sort of long-term sell. So going back to just kind of recap, we took a sell right back in here on December 10th, 143.20. And we actually closed all the way at the bottom. Like we caught like this entire move, guys. We caught 170 pips on this move. We caught it literally all the way to the bottom down here. And then we closed it. Price came back up to our entry point. Could we have re-entered? I think we could have re-entered maybe. But again, it kind of looks like, okay, maybe this was a big fake out. Maybe it wasn't ready to move lower yet. But now we can kind of see that there is definitely some, still some momentum to the downside. And watch, watch this trend line, guys. You guys know I'm not like the biggest, biggest fan of trend lines. But I do believe that it's important to look at the trend lines that are on the larger time frame. So uh, if this trend line gets broken, expect some major downside on pound yen, okay? Um, dollar yen, not really too interested in trading dollar yen. I'm actually just going to skip over this pair. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to skip over this pair. There's been this channel that we've been moving in for quite some time on dollar yen. And although I would like to sell pound yen, I would, I'm not interested in selling dollar yen right now, even though it is at a major supply level, even though I've told you guys that you know, in the past, so maybe a couple of weeks ago, a sell opportunity on this pair might look good. If we end up seeing the Fed hike the interest rates and cause that appreciation on the US dollar, that US dollar strength could drive a uh, price higher on this pair. Okay. Um, AUD USD. So AUD USD, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this and I'm going to go ahead and delete this and I'm going to go ahead and delete this and this and this and just kind of really clean up the charts at this point. And what I'm really looking at is just current price action. You guys know we caught this move right here. We sold right here on November 28th. We literally had like five pips of drawdown with this pair. Very, very little drawdown. And we caught a 140 pip move all the way to the top. Right, we held it over this weekend. The markets gapped at the beginning of that week, and then we closed this trade in the first couple hours of the markets being open. And that was uh, great. That was, I think, on to the other side, we had taken a sell on Euro AUD, and on that pair, we had made like 240 pips on. Right, you guys remember that? That was just a couple weeks ago. Um, those were two trades that that's what put us at such nice profit. For the month of um, for the month of December, because we took those trades late November, you can see the last week of November, and we held those trades into early December. Right, this is December third when we closed both the buy on AUD USD and the sell on Euro AUD. Real quick, guys, my battery is on eight percent. Let me just grab my charger out of my room just a second. All right, coming back, coming back, just a second. Okay, there we go. Let me just take a swig of water real quick. Okay, thank you guys for staying on here. Thank you guys for so many of you guys staying on here. I'm, I'm really trying to provide as much value as I can and just like talk in depth about some things because I know, because quite honestly, guys, yesterday on the weekly outlook, I was, I didn't, uh, normally on the days of the weekly outlook, because I do them at 8 p.m. Eastern time and out here it's 8 a.m. I usually try to wake up around like 6, 6.30 in the morning to just to try to get my day started, get in a routine and wake up. Yesterday I had some trouble waking up. I only woke up about 20 minutes before the weekly outlook. So I wasn't able to put like this energy and this time into uh, yesterday's weekly outlook. And I'm sure you guys could probably tell that it was reflected that way yesterday. So I'm trying to just kind of make up for that. I'm probably actually even going to share this uh, for free, unlike the free chat and everything. So that way everybody gets like a, a nice fair understanding of what's going on. Um, just cause I was a little, little bit out of it yesterday. But um, anyways, with AUD USD and NZD USD, I'm really kind of back on the sidelines with both of these pairs. Um, you guys know that for quite some time now, we've been watching the bottom, right? We called this bottom on AUD USD, right? It began with the Wyckoff method or Wyckoff setup back in October, right? Back in, we, we, we really didn't see it start to form until October 26th. 
when we got this spring right here, which was this break of support and then immediately price shooting right back up above the support, which is a very clear spring showing that buyers are going to be entering the market. And we called this buy back in October, right? So we've been bullish on AUD USD. And I had mentioned previously that once this downtrend broke, once this major downtrend that we've been in this entire year broke, that we'd probably start to see some upside. And that was definitely muffled a little bit by uh, the weekly candle from not last week, but the week before last. We really saw stellar sellers step back into the market. And a lot of this relates to the US dollar strengthening and just not really finding a lot of direction in the US dollar rather than falling as we would have liked to have seen, just continuing to stay in that consolidation range. And if anything, our bias now changing to the upside. And that's going to create a bias change on AUD USD and NZD USD as well. That's going to create both of these pairs having a negative bias now and expecting some downside. And that's where that's really where I think the, these pairs are at right now. I really think that it, even the monthly candle, right? Even the monthly candle just a couple weeks ago, right? When the month started, things were looking really good for AUD USD. It was everything that we wanted to see. And this is why it's good to be able to react to the market and um, you know, not necessarily be married to the bias because we, on the monthly chart, we got that break of that downtrend from this year. We got that big bullish engulfing candle on the monthly, right? Everything was pointing to the upside on AUD USD. That's actually why we chose to hold that trade over the weekend is because how that monthly candle opened. And this originally was a long-term trade, right? We were looking, well, we had almost hit our take profit. We were looking for I think like 228 pips. We were looking for taking profit somewhere up here. We only ended up closing it with 140 because of that, that nasty gap over the weekend. And I wasn't interested in holding it any longer, which we can see looking in hindsight was a great intuition and a great idea to do. But um, anyways, just to get into the, my, my point with AUD USD and NZD USD, uh, both of these pairs, I and really, again, it's kind of like Euro USD right now. I'm just looking for some direction. I'm looking to see how the markets digest and what sort of sentiment is created based on the rate hike and then go from there, okay? And that's for AUD USD and NZD USD. Um, USD CAD, very similar, guys, right? I mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't, don't think I necessarily have to, to toot my own horn again, but I just have to show you guys that this is, we're just being patient because we've completed a long-term setup, right? This is the chart showing USD CAD back on September 13th. And we called a buy zone down here with our targets at 134. And that's exactly what happened, right? We got our buy zone down here around 128 and price moved up 600 pips all the way up to 134. And I told you guys, I've been telling you guys on the webinars, okay, hit our target. Now we could potentially be looking for some potential sells. And we were looking for some potential sells, but this trend is still strong. This trend, just because it hits our price, we can't get married to that bias that we created three months ago to just sell at this point. We need to react to current price and what's happening. And what we're seeing right now is not just the US dollar strengthening, but USD CAD is not finding a lot of weakness. It still looks very strong. And, a lot, and also from a fundamental standpoint, if we wanna talk about fundamental backing of the Canadian dollar, um, there's a lot of weakness with the Canadian dollar right now. There's not a lot of reason to be selling this pair, which would mean selling the US dollar and buying the Canadian dollar. If anything, there's more argument to be buying the US dollar and selling the Canadian dollar. Um, you guys know that there was all that, um, all the, uh, the, the, the news last week with the CFO, the CFO of Huawei, okay, the CFO of Huawei, She's Chinese, right? And she, obviously, if you're Chinese and you're the CFO of a company and of a phone company, right, you obviously have some major ties to the Chinese government, no matter what way you look at it. And she was arrested, right? She was arrested. And the Chinese government was not very happy at Canada, right? They aren't very happy that, you know, it, it's, it, it, goes, it just breaks down to being privileged, right? The elite we aren't, I'm not talking about Chinese guys. Don't ever think I'm like discriminating against Chinese or anything like that. I've already talked about that. None of this stuff that I say is like racist or prejudiced or anything. It's just the way it is. It's the, I'm talking about the elites. It doesn't ma matter what economy, what government, doesn't matter who I'm talking about. I'm just talking about the elites in general. The elites believe that they are above the law, right? They believe that money 
buys everything. And for that, for a lot of things for them, it does. And unfortunately, that's the world that we live in. But uh, the elite is very upset because they think that they're above the law and they think that she shouldn't have been arrested, this and that, when she, you know, I, I, it's like, it's like uh, you know, I mean, we can get into like a whole long debate about it. I don't even really need to get too long into it. But you guys get the gist of what I'm trying to say. You know, people aren't above the law no matter how much money they have, right? Um, unfortunately, it is that way in some cases, um, but it shouldn't be that way. That's the whole point that we're, I'm trying to make is that it shouldn't be that way, right? And that's what Canada saw. They were like, okay, she's not above the law. She's going to get arrested. And so she was arrested and she was released on bail. Um, they paid her bond, but her passport was taken, right? So she can't leave the country. She can't do anything. She can't like run away or anything like that. And she's um, out on bond until she has an actual trial. And then, you know, there may, there, there may be sentencing that follows. And then there's this, there's now this legal battle. Now, China is very upset right now with the, with Canada. So, you know, they're going to be boycotting Canada for this and that, and that, you know, China owns the Canada and the United States. Okay. Canada, I mean, China owns North America, literally owns North America. We in Canada are in so much debt to China. Okay. So much debt. Like actually let's, so let's just Google it just for fun. So you guys can actually see, let's see how much debt is the U S um, how much debt is in the U S to China? And we'll Google it. As of September 2014, uh, foreigners owed six trillion dollars of U.S. debt, or approximately 47 percent of the debt held by the public of 12.8 trillion, and 34 percent of total debt. Blah blah blah. As of 2018, the largest holders were okay. So all, what we're what we're trying to get right here is as of 2018, the largest holders of our debt, right, of the U.S. debt, is China, Japan, Ireland, and Brazil. Okay. We can see we are in like literally China owns us. We're talking trillions of dollars, guys. Trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, right? Um, and you you can ever look up. You ever want to see like U.S. debt calculator, U.S. debt clock, right? You can go to U.S. debt clock and you can actually see our national debt clock in real time. You can go in onto this website and you can see this is a real time changing. Give it, give it a second to load really quickly. And this is it right here, okay? That's, right, this is hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions, okay? We are 21, the US is $21 trillion in debt to other countries, okay? Let that, let that sink in for a second. 21 trillion, guys. 21, that's 21 million billions, okay? That's 20. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's really actually crazy to think how much debt the U S is in. Okay. And how bad our economy actually is underlying in the surface, right? Unemployment rates can be down. Interest rates can be up, you know, inflation can be where they want it to be. There can be this whole facade out there, but at the end of the day, fiat currency is broken. Okay. Now that that's, that's a whole time for another discussion. That's another reason why I believe in the blockchain and why I believe so strongly in cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency will take over fiat currency. And it is such a dis disruptive technology for those of you guys that think that are listening to this and you've sold your, uh, sold your cryptocurrency. I guarantee you in 10, 15, 20 years from now, you're going to regret that decision of 110%. Cryptocurrency is not a bubble. The blockchain is not a bubble. Yes. There are a lot of scam currencies and what, what you would call shit coins out there that are not good. But if we're talking about like the big coins, like system based coins, like Ethereum, which or a technology based coin, like Ethereum or Bitcoin or any of like the main big coins, uh, they are not going anywhere. Guys, blockchain is not going anywhere. If, if you don't fully understand what blockchain is and how blockchain works, then I mean, if, if you did, you wouldn't sell your coins. That's the whole thing. If you understood how blockchain works and how disruptive the blockchain technology is, you would never sell your coins. You would only be buying more and buying more and buying more because it's, it just doesn't make any sense, right? It would make everything in this entire world so much easier. Everything from buying a car to traveling and getting a visa for another country to making sure your luggage is safe when you're traveling to paying a toll with your car to 
making sure your birth certificate is on tap for in case you never need it, making sure your resume is easily accessible. Guys, it's not, blockchain is not just a currency. Blockchain is an entity of how information is kept and shared and kept private and protected. And it is, it's such a deeper thing than just a coin that's used to pay for something. Okay. The, the, a coin that's used to pay for something is just one aspect. Okay. There's so much more value in the blockchain behind a, a just one coin. Okay. So, I mean, that, that's, a, that's another time for a, another topic of discussion, but just understand that, um, fiat currency is extremely effed up it's not it is not gonna last it physically cannot last long term okay we're only you guys know fiat currency was introduced after well there was the gold standard and then there was the Bretton Woods system and that all ended in 1971 when Richard Nixon ended the gold standard and then gold went on to the free market and then that's when we introduced the fiat currency so take what year are we in we're in 2000 and basically 2019 2000 late 2018 and fiat was just introduced in 1971 and i say just because if we're talking about you know let's just say 2018 years that from when our calendars started okay 40 years of that is not much time at all right we aren't even half a century into using the fiat system and it's already failing okay that should tell you guys something okay so that's that's i guess that's that's all i'm trying to say guys now keep in mind so some of you guys might be asking yourself let me let me just kind of like digress just just for two seconds about just because this is this is totally related i know as soon as i say this you, you you might be freaking out you might be like whoa whoa david all we do is trade fiat currencies, right? Every single currency you guys see over here, every single currency, New Zealand dollar, Euro, Canadian dollar, pound, yen, every single currency that we trade is a fiat currency. There is not a single currency in this world right now that is backed by anything. Okay. It is all printed and there is some central bank that tells you how much it is worth because they tell you how much it's worth. There's nothing backing any currency in this entire world. Let that sink in. Okay. Now, does that scare us as traders? Not really. For some of you guys that aren't thinking outside the box, it could scare you a little bit. But the only thing that's going to happen is once fiat, and this isn't going to happen right away, guys. This probably isn't going to happen next year, or the next five years, or maybe not even in the next 10 years. I'm talking this is probably going to be a multi-decade shift. Probably over the next 10 to 30 years, fiat currency is going to get phased out and cryptocurrency is going to be the new standard, right? I truly believe that I'm, I'm 25 right now. I don't plan on having kids until I'm probably in my 30s, okay? Um, or I don't know, before, I, I don't know. I wanna make sure I have, you know, tens of millions of dollars in the bank before I ever have kids. I don't think it's fair to bring a kid into the world that, that I can't even take care of if I, you know, am still working on my own goals and stuff like that. That's a whole nother conversation. But what I'm, the point of what I'm trying to make is that I truly believe that when my kids grow up, we are gonna be in a world where, cryptocurrency is as common as the internet you know like a five-year-old under plays on an ipad and understands what the internet is it's going to be the same way in 20 to 30 years from now i truly believe that okay now what does that mean it just means that instead of trading fiat currencies and their exchange rates we're just going to trade cryptocurrencies right in in I'm not in, in my, and you might be asking yourself then again, like just put things together, guys, like you use some, some common sense with this stuff because you might be asking, okay, David, well, if we're going to trade cryptocurrencies, why don't we trade them now? Well, it's still new guys. It's too new. It's, it's too volatile. And yes, volatility is good, but it's like, there is such thing as too much volatility in the markets. Okay. And I think crypto is too volatile right now. It's not, it hasn't had what we want, what we call mass adoption yet. It hasn't had that mass adoption. Okay. So um, understand that about cryptocurrency guys, that there will become a time in, you know, in this world when we shift from trading crypto, um, from when, when we shift from trading fiat currencies to cryptocurrencies. Now that's not going to happen for a very long time. We still have to get through the mass adoption phase, which is going to take probably at least a decade or so for the entire world to
to get on this thing of, okay, you know, we aren't using fiat currency anymore. Fiat currency dies and dies, but it's also going to take like a lot of big changes in government and elites. You guys know, like all the elites rely on fiat currency you guys, the Rothschilds, the, the Rockefeller. I mean, the Rockefellers aren't really much around anymore, but we're talking like the descendants and, and the people like underneath them that they share their information to. Cause that's very real guys. If you think I'm talking like some conspiracy theory type stuff, like you're, you're literally just lying to yourself. You're living in a dream world. There are elites. There are families that rule this entire world. They control everything. They own all of the major companies. They control all of what the media sends out to you. And it's, it's just a fact, guys. There's, it's, not, it's not disputable. Some people don't want to accept the fact. Some people don't want to believe the truth. But that's just the way it is, guys. The, the entire world is controlled by a couple of families that tell the media what to say, that tell everybody what to say, that control all of the central banks, and it's all for a bigger agenda of them staying rich and keeping fiat currency alive, okay? And I get, it's not a conspiracy theory, guys, so don't, I mean, if you listen to that and you think it's just, you're, you're just blind if you're listening to that and you think that it's a conspiracy theory, because it's not, okay? It's, it's the way the world works, okay? It's, it's the real way the world works, and I'm sure most of you guys listening to this probably are on the same page as me. You probably understand. It's not like, Again, it's not an opinion. It's, it's just a fact of the way things are, okay? Um, but anyways, once those people, uh, you know, start to lose power and lose control and, and, and crypto becomes more disruptive, we're going to see fiat currency kind of leave the picture. But that's also why, like, literally, guys, let me, let me just give you an example. Let me just give you one example, and then, and then I'll, 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 I'll cut it with this, and then we'll get back to the main picture, okay? A couple months ago, okay, I believe it was the CEO of JP Morgan, the CEO of JP Morgan. He went out on, I don't remember if it was CNN or Fox, it doesn't matter which program it was, it just matters the gist of what he said. And he told the entire world, he broadcasted to everybody on that day, he said that cryptocurrency is a scam. He said that Bitcoin is a scam. That same day, JP Morgan, his company, acquired $800 million worth of Bitcoin. What, what, is that, what does that tell you guys? And that's a fact, guys. Like People could see the blockchain ledgers of them acquiring this. That's not like a conspiracy theory, okay? It's, it's literally, it happened. It's a fact that that happened, okay? So what do you think that that tells you guys? It tells you that the elites understand that this technology is disruptive and they are behind the scenes trying to get his, their hands on as much of it. That's why they are publishing it to the media. And that's why you see everywhere that cryptocurrency is a scam and this and that because they want the public to lose their control. They want the public to sell off and for everybody to lose as much control as they have on their cryptocurrency so that they can buy as much as they can and they can own it. And then, and then in turn, we would, you know, we're, we're back to a, a, an area where the power is in, is in a couple people's hands and the public doesn't have as much control. So if you have coins, hodl them, guys. Keep holding them and don't get rid of them. Hold them um, and it's just something that, that you need to do, okay? So that's that, okay? Um, anyways, I mean, that's, that's the gist of what I'm trying to get across, guys. Uh, USD Singapore dollar, holy cow, USD Singapore dollar is dropping hard. Um, I'm still watching this pair, guys. I see I've talked about for a while. I know I've got a couple trend lines on here. I apologize. Let me see if there's anything I can remove. I can remove this one. I apologize if my charts look confusing. You guys know for a while now, I said I've been looking for some sells on USD Singapore dollar. However, I kind of retracted that last week. I said, and even yesterday, I said, I'm not really interested in, I want to really see how the US dollar reacts to the interest rate decisions, uh, the interest rate decision before I decide to take a position on this pair. But if I'm just looking at this pair from purely a technical standpoint, it's definitely showing signs of overbought. It's definitely showing signs of buyers slowing down and sellers taking control. And it looks like we may be able to find some uh, downside movement on this pair. But again, if on Wednesday, all we do is we see the US dollar just boom, just fly through the roof, then um, it's not gonna look very good for um, this pair. We're probably going to see USD Singapore dollar move up higher if we see um, the US dollar strengthen significantly. And then 
finally, guys, just the one that I want to talk about because I, I mentioned this yesterday inside of Telegram, inside of the private group with you guys. I said, after Wednesday, after we see, because Wednesday we have some CPI coming out for uh, the Canadian dollar right here. Wednesday, boom, CPI, month over month CPI that's coming out for the Canadian dollar. Um, I want to see how this CPI comes out. If it ends up being a surprise and we see some strengthening for the Canadian dollar, um, I may look at some sells on this pair. Um, I'm a big fan of the weekly chart. The past two weeks have been very bearish, but to be quite honest, guys, the past couple hours, honestly, since I posted that, I posted that when NZDCAD was actually all the way down here. Over the, over the past like 12 hours since I posted it, we've seen NZDCAD really rally like 75 pips higher. So I'm actually slowly like transitioning to removing this, this idea. It looks like this was just a correction for a move higher, to be honest, because also if we go back to the monthly, the monthly doesn't look like it's coming down for this pair, right? The monthly is extremely bullish right now for NZDCAD, right? We had that nice dip for the past couple months on NZDCAD. And then for the month of October, we saw it kind of stop a little bit, pause at this zone, right? We can actually see like right here at this zone. And then since then, we've seen, we saw a big rally all of November. And then this is December now. So there's definitely arguments for both sides right now. And to be quite honest, it really looks like this sell argument is getting invalidated. Um, I would like to obviously see what happens around this area. If we end up breaking last week's highs, well, completely forget that idea of selling NZD cat. It really depends on what happens over the next like 48 to 72 hours and how it reacts around this zone. Okay. So guys, that's what I'm looking at. Um, sorry. I, I literally spent so much time on this webinar today, like a full hour, just breaking down everything, but um, I don't even really think I need to say sorry. I think it's good to go into everything and it's good to share with you guys my opinions and my thoughts and, and kind of where I am with everything. And the biggest thing is, guys, is keep in mind we're getting to the end of the year, right? Two things to keep in mind. Not just that we're getting to the end of the year, but we're already up 6% for the month. Like, I am totally fine with not taking a trade for the rest of the month because I, there's no need to. We hit our target. There's nothing that I'm real, that's, that is showing that's amazing to trade right now. It's the end of the year. I, I, might have said end, 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 I might have just said end of the month at the beginning of that sentence. I meant to say end of the year. It's the end of the year. It's the end of the year, guys. It's the end of a calendar year of 365 days. If you can't go 14 days without trading, like, guys, come on. All right? Like, get real. Get real with your trading for a second. If you listen to that and you're like, I need to trade, I need to trade, I need to trade. Control your emotions control your emotions guys 2019 is going to be a huge year let me just present it in this situation and give you this perspective would you rather let your emotions control you and jump into trades that might not have the best confluence or conviction behind them just because you want to get into a trade and risk losing capital and then in 2019 when there's these amazing perfect opportunities that look great have less capital to be able to trade those, those setups, it, it doesn't make any sense, right? Like why jump into something now just because you're emotional and you're a human being and you want to make money now instead of just being patient and training your psychology to wait for some better setups next year. Okay, guys? So I'm still going to be doing these, these daily webinars. Um, but as I said, after the 23rd, guys, let me pull up the calendar again real quick just to be because I want to be transparent. I want to make sure that there's no surprises with any of you guys and everybody understands that on, at the end of this week, once this week is over, guys, we're done for the year. Okay, we're done for the year. There's not going to be a weekly outlook for the next two Sundays, and there's not going to be any daily live webinars until January 1st, until Tuesday, January 1st. That's when we'll get back into the daily webinars. Okay, so next week, the normal five webinars that I do, the weekly outlook on Sunday and the four private webinars for you guys, there won't be any webinars. It's a, it's a week for you guys to take off, enjoy your, your time over Christmas, 
or Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate. If you live in a country where you don't celebrate any of that, just enjoy the end of the year. Spend some time with your family. Spend some time with your loved ones. Spend some time reviewing your account for the year. I'm going to be working on finishing the, um, the course so it gets done. I'm also working on, uh, I mean, I also have to make a move. I'm transitioning from Los Angeles back to Arizona. I'm going to be moving to a part of Arizona I've never lived in before. I'm going to be moving to Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm very excited because there's a very large presence of Forex traders out there. And I can see how I can, um, you know, have my, put my mark on the trading community in, in uh, uh, Southern Arizona. And uh, I'm excited to do that. And so that's going to be happening. So um, I just, you know, but the biggest thing is guys is I don't want you to lose your focus. You know, I notice that that happens way too often in the group. You know, we go a couple days without a trade and everybody just writes off the group. Everybody's just like, Oh, the group's dead. When it's like, it's like, I mean, that really just goes to show how many people have a short term mindset guys. Like, like if you guys can't take a week or a week and a half where we don't do any trading and we just chill because it's the end of the year and we're already up a bunch of profit, then, then that's, that, that's, that's, I mean, that's something that the mindset that you guys have to have to work on. And I'm not, I'm not saying all of you guys, you know, actually pretty much every one of you guys listening to this right now um, are on the same page as me, right? Maybe, maybe I'm, I don't know who watches the recording. I'm not able to see the recording. I, I know specifically looking at the people that are in here right now, you guys have that good mindset, right? So don't think anything I'm saying right now is directed towards any of you that are watching this live right now, because especially if you're taking the time out of your day, most of you guys, it's like three in the morning where you are, or like midnight where you are watching this, you're taking the time out of your day. You're going above and beyond the call of duty. You're doing the correct things to be successful. You're, you're, you're making those habits now to have your future success. It's called the long, it's called the short term pain for the long term gain. Okay. So I appreciate all you guys. Um, Jake, let me just go through the comments really quick. Uh, vegan gains, NZD CAD. Uh, yeah, just went over that. Jacob says China has labor camps for anyone that dissents there. Exactly. I think it's 6 trillion. At some point, all of our government spending will go towards paying debt services and not even paying down the principal. Exactly. That's why 401ks are a scam. IRAs are a scam. Social security is a scam. Um, like if you're, if you're young, if you're like between the ages of 20 to 40 and you're paying into social security, you're literally throwing money away. You will, there is a very high chance that you will never, ever, ever see a social security check. That that money, that the way our economy is in the next 20 years will change so differently that they're just, the government, the government can do whatever they want. And they're just going to say, oh, sorry guys, we don't have your social security anymore. And then everybody's going to be complaining. Oh, what happened? I paid all this money into social security. They're going to say, oh, well, sucks for you. So instead of spending your money, and I'm, I'm not necessarily telling you what to do with your money or giving you financial advice, but consider doing other things with the money that you put into a 401k or a social security, put it into some sort of private management, like what I do. Okay. What I do is very low risk. It's very nice returns. You have the opportunity to compound long-term. Your money is in a reputable, legitimate, regulated by the European union. Cause keep in mind guys, let me, let me just say this about FX choice. A lot of people are like, Oh, it's sketchy. FX choice is based in beliefs, this and that guys. I'm opening up my own brokerage next year. I, I, I'm sure some of you guys, if you've been following along the webinars, you guys have been following along. With, I'm opening up my own brokerage next year. It's going to be based in Belize too. It's going to be regulated by the IFSC. My bank is probably going to be somewhere in Europe. Okay. Just like FX Choices Bank is in Bulgaria. And because their bank is in Bulgaria, it's regulated by the European Union. Okay. Everything with FX Choice is legit and regulated. You don't ever have to be scared of, oh, am I going to get withdrawals? Like, Guys, if you saw some of the withdrawals I've made from FX Choice, like I've made so much, so much money in with, or so much, so many withdrawals. At one point, guys, my live account that you guys see at one hundred and forty thousand, when I was in Australia, I took out sixty thousand dollars for some investments out there. I put a little bit into crypto, a little bit of this, this into that, and, and some other investments. But like, I took. Have you ever seen someone just take out sixty thousand dollars and not have any issues with the broker from profits? Like. I, I did that and I had zero problems. Like I back FX choice 110%, just the exact same way I'm going to be backing my own brokerage 110%. It's all going to be regulated and registered and verified and regulated everything that you could ask for. Jacob says Bloomberg just posted that Bitcoin was a bubble that popped it means it's getting close to buy time while they scare the masses. Exactly. 
Buy the fear, sell the hype. Jacob says all bank records that are U.S. based. Exactly, all bank records are U.S. based. Uh, Vegan Gains says love the rant. The rant's awesome. I'm, I love the support. Vegan Gains. Jacob says got a stack of books to read until the course is ready. That is awesome, Jacob. Um, read some read some things. Uh, Mark Douglas is great. Trading in the zone. Trade what you see. Trade what you see is a great book. Naked Forex is good as well. Um, any good mindset books like Napoleon Hill, uh, Think and Grow Rich, The Forty Eight Laws of Power. Um, what is it? There's uh, the Devil's Something. It's by Napoleon Hill. It's a follow-up to Think and Grow Rich. I'm, I'm blanking right now on the name of that book. Some Those, those books are great. Um, the Four Agreements by Don Miguel. Uh, I forget his the last part of his name, but by, by, by Don Miguel. Uh, why is the IRA a scam? Oh, why is IRA a scam? Um, uh, Jacob says, because the Dow Jones is negative for the year. How did the IRA fare? Uh, yeah, Don Miguel Ruiz. Yeah, that, that's right, Jacob. Uh, uh, why is IRA a scam? Well, IRA, I mean, IRA isn't necessarily a scam. I mean, in my eyes, it's a scam because you are allowing the, because the banks are taking your money that you put into an IRA. They're making like 20, 30, 40% a year on your money. And then they're giving you a very small chunk. They're giving you, you know, that 5% or that 7%. And again, uh, and, and Jacob actually makes a very good point. It's based off of the Dow Jones as well as like other mutual funds, Dow Jones, S&P 500, things like that. And those only do well when stocks are, when the stock market is doing well. So, you know, you, we can see how well, like, look at, look at the Dow Jones, guys. I got it right here. How the Dow Jones isn't doing very hot. Look at that. This is the Dow Jones. Dow Jones isn't doing very hot. This is January, guys. This is this year. This is the beginning of this year. This is where the Dow Jones opened at the beginning of this year. We're like 3,000 pips lower. We're like a percent. I'm sorry. We're, we're ten, I'm sorry. 10% lower than where we opened up the year. at. Okay. So Dow Jones is not doing very good. S&P 500. Watch. Let's actually do this. Watch. Let's, let's check this out, guys. I actually have it on here somewhere. Let me check really quickly. I've got it on here. S&P 500 right here. Here is, this is the S&P 500. Um, bum, bum, bum. One year. Date for this range. I mean, here it is right here. This is going to change, obviously. But for, I wish, where's the monthly? But, okay, regardless, right here. Look at it. This is it right here. S&P 500 annual total return for 2018 is five percent five percent back on your money this year that's that's pennies guys we 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 did that on one trade we did that in we were already up six percent just for the month of december right so like that's that's why i say investing in an ira is a scam because you can get such better returns with low risk like i'm not going high risk guys it's not like it's People will say, okay, well, the S&P 500 is, is safer because it's lower risk. That's not necessarily true, right? I use the way I set up my trades in the way I use good risk management, risking 1% or 2% per trade and always looking for good risk to reward on all of my trades. I will never lose money long term. I have clients that are, if you're curious, like if any of you guys listening to this right now are curious and you have like a significant amount of money, you have, you know, tens of thousands of dollars or $50,000 or $100,000 and you are wanting to invest it into my MAM account with what I do, I am more than happy to hop on a call with you and with discretion show you, I mean, I'm obviously going to block out account numbers and account names and everything, but I am willing to show you accounts of clients that have been with me since the beginning of 2017 and even with the losses and even with what happened back in February when we lost 18% on one trade because of the slippage and it gapping our stop loss because of the broker's lack of liquidity and my fault also by not looking at the economic calendar at the right time and this and that. If you guys don't know about that drama, go and read my Facebook post. Some, someone was trying to like call me out on that when they had no experience of trading. Okay, Even those clients that went through all of this with me from the beginning of 2017 because of my risk to reward and because of my risk management from January 1st, 2017, I have clients that are in net profit two years later. Okay. 
and it's way more than the 5.11% for the year of 2018 and 21% for the month of December. Actually, for the year of December of 2017, I didn't do much higher than the S&P 500. Uh, for the year of 2017, my returns were 24.15%. Okay, so a little bit higher than S&P 500, but regardless, we, we look at it this year where we're in so we're way more profit. I need to do the exact calculations. I always know by the end of the year, but I know that we're in way more profit than 5.11% for the, for the year of 2018. Okay, so I am very confident and that's why, that's why guys, I have people that are wanting to, guys, I have a guy from Dubai that wants to give me $5 million to trade for him just because he, 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 he's smart. He's smart. He sees that my returns are better than the average mutual fund. So why would you, why, why wouldn't you do that? Right? I use low risk, same risk, if not less risk than investing in the S and P 500. And like people act like you, like you don't guys look at this, look at 2008. People act like you don't make that, like you don't lose money in, in, in tr investing in the S and P 500 or the Dow Jones. Look at 2008 people that invest that had their money. They lost 37%. 37% in one year. Holy crap. I can't even imagine. I would get, I would get castrated by my clients if I lost them 37% in a year. Look at 2002. Look at 2001, 2002. And 2003, 2000. Look at that. Combined total of 42% of your account is lost over a three-year period investing in the S&P 500. Like pe people think that it's so safe to invest in these other things and that it's, ah, oh, Forex is a scam, this and that. No. Uh, Vegan Gain says, how do people with massive capital find professional traders to invest in? Um, there's a couple of ways. A lot of the ways is by word of mouth. So that's how I've gained most of my big clients is it actually started with one gentleman in Southern California that gave me like, a, uh, and he's actually, he was one of my very first clients that invested more than a couple thousand dollars. He trusted me with over a hundred thousand, like $125,000 back in the beginning of 2017. And he said, do what you can with it. All right. He was a multi, he's a multi, multi, multi millionaire. And, and that was nothing to him. Right. That was like less than 1% of his net worth that he, that he gave me to trade with. Okay. I've made him some significant gains over the past two years. Over these past two years, he's told it. Obviously, guys, if you're rich, you have a rich circle. You have a lot of rich people around you that you network with. And so word of mouth is very powerful in the high net worth um, industry or high net worth networking like area, if you will, niche. And he told his friends. And then boom. Next thing I know, I, in my email, wanting to be wanting to go out to Southern California to meet with another guy that wants to give me a quarter million dollar or put a quarter million dollars into my man because this first guy is making so much money with it and he sees that it's good. And then boom, 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 boom. All this good stuff happens. Okay. And then my effects book. Yeah. My effects book is great. Jacob. Yeah, absolutely. People find me on my effects book all day long. I have people in my inbox, in my, in my email that are like, Hey, I saw your, your, my FX book on my FX book. You know, I saw your track record on my FX book and I want to learn how to invest in your ma'am. I want to put $50,000 into your ma'am. Absolutely. The, and then, uh, another way is by earning it as well. So, um, in, in this next year, I'm going to start to find individuals in the group. Those of you guys that I see that are being consistent and you guys are building a track record and you're showing consistency. And I'm going to reach out to you guys and I'm going to offer if you guys want to start trading for a prop firm, right? And they'll start, I mean, you can Google it too. You don't have, I mean, I'm just talking about the prop firm that I use. You can Google prop firm, you know, trading prop firm and you'll find like ones that you can use online, which is fine. And usually they'll start you on a, an account. They'll give you an account. You usually have to pay for it monthly, like $200 a month or whatever. And they'll give you $50,000 right? They'll give you the login information for a trading account with $50,000, a live $50,000 account with like one to three leverage, very low leverage. There's no way you could blow the account. That's why it's important that you learn to use good risk management now, because when you get to that level, you can't just start going high risk with other people's money and you go with $50,000. $50, and if you do good, then they give you a hundred thousand dollars. And then if you do good, they give you a quarter million dollars. And then if you do really good with that, they give you a million dollars. And then if you do really good at that, they give you $10 million and this and that and that. And then you move on and on and on. Okay. So whew, lots of talking guys, but I hope, I hope today's webinar was valuable to you guys. Okay.
I hope, I hope you guys got some value. We literally covered it all. We covered all the pairs I'm interested in. We, we covered blockchain. We covered investing. We covered all sorts of stuff. And those of you guys that continually stick with it and stay consistent and stay growing, stay hungry, stay humble, stay learning, you're going to do very well. You're going to go very far. Because at the end of the day, guys, I was just like you guys. I was a trader that aspired to manage multiple six and seven figures and travel the world, be on an island in Thailand, living my dreams and doing it. And now I am doing it, guys. I literally look out my, my window right now. I'm in a private villa all to myself. Literally, I'm in a private villa on the middle of an island all to myself right now my own swimming pool, everything I want to do, the beach, I can, I can look out my window and see the ocean. I can go down to a private beach that's right in front of me. I can hop on my scooter and go do whatever I want. And it's because of Forex, guys. It's because of being able to leverage my skills. And it's beautiful, guys. It's literally beautiful. It's so, I can't tell you guys how satisfying it is knowing that it doesn't matter what else is going on in my life. Anything that's going on, I can still make money. It's a skill that someone can't take from me. I can be anywhere in the world. And as long as I have Wi-Fi and a connection on my laptop, I can trade and I can make money. All right? And I'm talking year over year, right? Not every single month do I make a ton of money. But there's months I have my crazy good months that I make a ton of money that pay for my slow months or that take care of my living expenses and my lifestyle and my slow months. And I'm very good at budgeting my money. I'm very good at like making sure I save, save my money. It's very good to like work on your credit too. Keep your credit good. All that good stuff. Vegan Gaines has learned the most on this webinar than any other since I started. I am so glad to hear that, man. I'm vibing so hard right now. I just spent an hour and a half of you guys' time. I appreciate some of you guys that it's like 3.30 in the morning right now where you are and you're still on this listening because you guys are the grinders. You guys are the ones that are going to be successful. You guys know who you are. Okay. I feel really bad for anybody that's listening to this webinar and skipped through it and didn't listen to the whole thing because a webinar like this can change your life. Okay. A webinar like this can, you can have an entire paradigm shift and get to the next level of where you want to be just by, just by being actionable on the things that you hear. Okay. So guys, I appreciate every single one of you guys. Jacob says I started the webinar so tired, but now I'm ready to run through a whole. <laughs> hey, I'm glad to hear that. Make sure you get, get some good sleep though, guys. Get some, get some good rest for sure. You know, make sure you refresh your body. Make sure you, you get that, you get that good, good real rest that get in that deep sleep, get that in that REM state. So you can really like uh, your body can do its healing with what it needs to do. So you can get up tomorrow and, and kill it and keep, keep, you know, obviously do that day over day. So I appreciate you guys. You guys are all amazing. For all of you guys that like my stuff, that comment on my stuff, that engage, that send me those awesome messages, that just keep me going, I truly appreciate each and every one of you guys. And I hope that you, obviously this isn't the last webinar, so I'm just saying this just to say this. Um, I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your year. I hope you guys are all making goals and doing actionable things now today well i mean if it's late right now obviously you don't have to but i'm talking like in the morning tomorrow you're doing things this week to make sure that you are successful next year don't wait until the first don't wait until january 1st to set those goals and start doing things don't just set goals now for that what you're going to do in january set goals now and start taking action on those goals this year Okay, Jacob, I like how you said that you, you're already reading some books before the course is out. Guys, take a hint from Jacob, okay? I, I mean, if, you, if you're already doing it, great. Okay, I'm not trying to like say that you aren't, okay? So sometimes people take what I say really negatively. It's really not. I'm just constructive criticism, guys. Just, you know, learn from your peers, okay? There's, there's those of you guys, I recognize those of you guys that put in the work. I recognize and I know who's going to be successful. I can see it, okay? So... Put in the work, guys. Grind hard. Stay blessed. Stay humble. Stay in that grind, that hungry mode. Don't get comfortable where you are because the minute you get comfortable is when you start to go backwards. You need to be constantly putting yourself 
in this state of uncomfort so that you can learn and that you can grow. Okay, because you don't grow when you're comfortable. The only time you grow is when you're uncomfortable. Okay, look up the story of the crab if you haven't heard of the crab, right? Crabs, they only grow when they're out of their shell, right? They only stay, they stay the same size when they're in their shell, but as soon as they leave their shell, they grow much bigger and bigger and bigger and they get a new shell. And then they shed that shell and they get a brand new shell and they grow and grow and grow. Okay, learn the story about the crab. Okay. Or learn the, learn the story of the Chinese bamboo tree, right? You can, sit, you can sit for four years and not have any growth and not have any noticeable results. And on the fifth year, become the biggest thing in the world. Become, become, grow the longest you can in a six or 12 month period because of all the work you put in those four years previously. Okay? And that's how you should treat your life is that it's, it's, a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Okay? Just stay at it. It's okay to slow down. It's okay to lose a little bit of focus. It's okay. Life comes in the way, guys. I get it. I've had life come in the way this year plenty of times. Okay? My parents of 30 years got divorced this year. At the same time, my little brother attempted suicide. Okay? It's things that are not easy for me to talk about. But I'm going to address it and be transparent with you guys because some people think that I don't have anything that goes on with my life and my life is just this perfect ball of wonder and I'm, I have this great life. Guys, I, I do have a good life. I'm very blessed to be where I am, but I've earned it, okay? I have not been given anything that I have and I get through all of my personal things and I get through all of my personal problems. Do I slow down a little bit? Just sometimes the track gets derailed for a second or I guess not derailed, but does the train slow down a little bit? Absolutely. But does it ever get derailed and go completely off the tracks? Never, ever, ever. We stay on the tracks. The only thing we do is slow down a little bit. And then we just throw some, a little bit more coal in the fire. We steam things back up. We, we get our focus back. And we start going full throttle again. Okay? And it's okay to go in those waves. But don't go in that wave of where it gets so bad that it derails the track. Because how I always say is you'll be out before you were ever in. Okay, you don't want to be out before you were ever in. You don't want to sit, sit 10 years down the road and say, wow, I should have just focused a little bit more and taken Forex seriously and taken, taken this seriously. Because guys, it's not very difficult if you can train your mindset. A couple percentage a month averaged out over a year is all you need to really grow some money long term. And, and, and not even grow your own money, is to be able to get that consistency to get to a point where other people can see that you know what the hell you're doing and will give you some money that you can leverage and you can work with and you can take a little percentage of the profits with and this and that. Okay, that's, that's the true goal because I know not everybody has tens of thousands of dollars to start with. You know, most of you guys listening to this I just know the statistics. I'm not calling anybody out of this. It's just the statistics. Most of you guys probably don't have more than a couple thousand dollars in your bank account to work with. Okay. So if you, if you're in that situation where you're living paycheck to paycheck, you're, you're barely making ends meet and you're asking, okay, well, how am I going to get all this money to compound with? Don't worry about that. Don't think about the money. Focus on the process. Focus on being consistent and the money will come. As long as you have a goal and you have a plan, that's what matters. Okay, guys. So you guys are all awesome. I'm done taking up an hour and 30 minutes of your guys' time. You guys are all amazing. Just stay focused, stay grinding. Don't lose that. Just don't close that light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. Make sure, make sure you keep that. Okay. And with that guys, I will see you guys tomorrow on tomorrow's daily live webinar. Um, if there's more trades, anything that I see, I'll call it out. And you guys have a wonderful rest of your morning, evening, or afternoon, depending on where you are. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care, guys.